Hey everybody, it's Matt Shu from Upright Health and today I wanted to talk with you about the idea of meniscus and labrums, uh, menisci, excuse me, and labrums absorbing impact. So traditionally when you, when you speak with uh, physicians, usually they'll tell you that uh, your labrum or your menisci are the things that help you absorb impact from things like jumping up and down, jumping off of something. Um, and it's a very, very interesting idea, um, but I don't think it's particularly um, accurate. Um, and the reason I say this is for a couple of reasons. First, if um, just from a from, from the point of view of consistency, if you think about the menisci and the labrums as being the things that actually absorb impact, um, then it really makes pretty much zero sense to uh, popularize and um, consistently do. Uh, things like meniscectomies and um, labrectomies um, where you're basically cutting off bits of the labrum and bits of the menisci. So for example, people who have meniscal tears, a lot of times uh, the treatment, the, a large number of the times the treatment is to actually cut the torn pieces of meniscus off, which effectively reduces the amount of tissue that you have in there to absorb impact. Now, um, it's interest, even more interesting is that a recent uh, article that was published in, two, in 2016, I believe, in February, actually notes that uh, the results of a real meniscus surgery are the same, basically, as doing fake meniscus surgery. So very interesting results there. So that's uh, one um, set of facts that makes it seem very odd to even believe that the menisci are the things that are, are dealing with um, uh, dealing with shock absorption. Um, still don't have the data yet on the labral tears and that kind of thing, but I'm not going to be surprised when the data does come out on it. Now, as for the um, for the other reason why I think shock absorption is a function of something other than these small structures is because uh, people are able to train their abilities to absorb shock. So for example, if you had asked me 10 years ago, or actually probably about eight years ago to do this, uh, this would have really, really, really hurt. And I would have said, uh, I don't want to do that more than once because every time I would do something like this, uh, it would feel like something was really bad in my knees and something was really bad in my hips. Now I can do this basically all day and I will do this all day if required in this video. If you just don't believe me, I'll just keep doing it. Um, basically, I have trained my body to be able to absorb impact better. And many people do this over time. So we have clients who are much older than, older than me who are able to gradually increase their ability to absorb shock effectively. Now, what is it that you can train that can help you absorb shock over time? Sometimes the training effect is very quick. Sometimes it takes a little bit more time, but there's obviously something that can be trained to help you absorb impact. Now, what could that possibly be? You really cannot add cartilage by doing any sort of training, right? You cannot repair your meniscus or repair your labrum with any sort of physical activity known to man at this point, right? But somehow by doing things over and over again, you can increase your ability to safely absorb impact. What part of your body are you able to train to do that? That would be your muscles. So that's why we focus on muscle activity. That's why we focus on muscle balance. Uh, regardless of age, it's very important to think about what your muscles actually do, whether, whether they can function well enough to help you do things like step off of something, jump onto something. That's all a question of muscle activity and not a question of what's inside your joint. So I hope that helps you conceptualize uh, in a different way the idea of shock absorption. And I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.